Hello, this is Alex with Grow How. Today we're going to talk, talk about tomato curly top virus. Now, this time of the year, we've already had a lot of talk about it on all the, um, the Facebook groups and everything, but people are still going to be noticing it, and so we, we need to talk about it. Certainly, I need to have something ready for next year. But curly top virus with your tomato is, it looks a lot like drought. Um, except your tomatoes are going to curl, the leaves are going to curl upward, hence curly top. They're also going to get thick and leathery. You might even see some purple veining in them. And the biggest problem with curly top is there's not really much you can do uh, there's, except remove the plant. I mean, if it's got curly top, you can't spray for it, you can't get rid of it. You've got to take out the plant. Um, the other difficult thing about it is there's not a lot you can do to prevent it. Now, curly top is spread by a bug, a leaf hopper, and it's the beet leaf hopper. It's not a tomato leaf, leaf hopper, it's a beet leaf hopper. So it eats things in the same family that beets are related families. So it's gonna, you know, spinach, beets, um, some of the weeds that we have out here, uh, it's going to eat all of those. So if it's a it's in that beet family or related to the beet family, the kinopod family, uh, then then it goes hops around and lands on a tomato. It doesn't know it's on a tomato and not a beet, and so it sucks on the the tomato and transmits the virus. It doesn't like the tomato, so it doesn't hang around. The other thing about it is it blows in on the wind currents really easily so if you have a windstorm moving from one point of the country to another it will literally move these these bead leaf hoppers with it so you go out and if you've got a large tomato patch a lot of times you'll have good tomato good tomato good tomato bad tomato bad tomato good tomato good tomato on and then some more bad tomatoes so it, it's really not a consistent um, it's not a consistent disease, it's not a consistent pest, and it leads to some really interesting difficulties. Um, the plus side on that is most of the time, most of your tomatoes are okay. Negative side is, you, know, you, you can't really prevent it. Now what you can do is you can remove some of these kinopods, the beets, the spinach, so they're not directly adjacent to your tomatoes, so they're not likely to just hop over for a quick nip and then find out it's wrong. How effective that is, I don't know. As I was reading up on it, the, um, the scientists and the extension agents really didn't say much about the benefits of removing you know, any competing crops that, that might harbor the pest. And in reality, they're probably just as more than happy to eat your beets and not jump over to your tomatoes. So. But then again, they may just jump over accidentally and try it and move back to the beets. So I, I really don't know that there's a benefit of that. I don't know that I can tell you that there's gonna be a good thing on that. Um, I also checked, there has been some talk about it being in something that can get established in the soil. And I, I know a very respectable horticulturalist who has said something about that. I can't find references to this virus harboring in the soil. So that is just something um, that right now I can't say I, it is going to be a problem. Of course, that leaves us with the problem anyway of, okay, what do you do when your plants are sick? And the only answer is you've got to remove them and in hopes that you'll prevent any other spreading. Again, these leaf hoppers don't stay put. They'll, they give something a shot and then they move on. They may be in the neighbor's yard or if there's a good windstorm, they may be in the next state over. So get familiar with recognizing it early, take out the infected fruit. Uh, even though I don't know of any evidence that it's soil borne, um, certainly you're not gonna have a lot of those plants staying in the soil over winter, but it's a good idea just to rotate your crops every year regardless. Uh, and if you have a particular problem, I know one person that says, well, I only get it when I plant in this spot. Um, it may take a further evaluation. There may be another disease or another issue that's imitating curly top somehow. Um, there are blights that are out there. There are a couple of diseases that are uncommon in Utah that could be out there. 
Um, just keep in mind, don't get attached to a disease if we don't have a really good firm diagnosis. And even as a horticulturist, if I'm a little bit iffy, I bring in other people and we try and look at it together and figure out what's going on. So, so be aware of that. If you have any questions, please hit me in the comments below. Um, let me know what I can do. Let me know of any other subjects you'd like to get covered. Uh, I'm kind of hoping I can get some more field work done this week, but I haven't got any of those ready yet. And let me know. And then please hit the subscribe button. Uh, my last video I posted was the best, um, best performing video in the first 48 hours, but we only got like three new subscriptions. So you know, please hit the subscription button. It does help build the channel. It helps uh, the YouTube algorithms find me. And it also um, hopefully helps you by encouraging me to produce more videos because you're obviously watching them. So again, uh, questions below. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Catch y'all later. Manana.